Here we come, heading down towards the start finishing line. With my head down, elbows in, feet in, everything tucked in. Trying to get every last bit of speed out of the, uh, the little 600 as we head off down Bray Hill. Tight to the hedge on the right, flick through the crossroads. We want everything lined up right so I can hold it absolutely flat out through the bottom of Bray Hill. See the bike squirming there as the, su the suspension fully compresses at the bottom of Bray Hill. Now, out from the sunshine, back into some shade. And as we wind down, uh, all the way back down to first gear for the tight right-hander. And you'll see here, it's, it's a sunny day, but under those trees, there's a lot of shade, which makes it quite difficult to hit your reference points. You have to be very accurate in where you are on the course. And it's very interesting to see the data here and watch, uh, see the brake pressure. As we come into the corner, easing the brake off ever so slightly, change the direction. Picking that throttle back up as we accelerate and drive hard out of the turn as we uh, work our way out towards Union Mills. And you see the, uh, very interesting to see the, the revs of the bike here build up as the bike's over on the side of the tyre. Absolutely flat and six gear through that, that kink as we head up into Union Mills. And we dive back down into the shade again. And you hear the bike squirming there as the suspension's compressing as I'm asking everything I can out of that back tyre, accelerating as hard as I possibly can. You can actually hear the, the revs of the bike uh, sort of uh, working up and down as the bike squirms on the, on the back suspension. And we're heading up to the uh, Balagheri, big committed corner, flat out in top gear. Drop it back one. And drive as hard as you can back on that throttle. Want to carry every bit of speed we can and more as we're heading up towards Crosby in a really fast section of the course. So every bit of speed we can carry out of uh, Balagheri is going to help in our big run up the next hill. Now that's a fully committed corner there, not lifting a, an absolute millimetre. It's the throttle wire fully full tight as we go through that corner. Six gear and tipping in about 180 miles an hour. So very committed corner. Bit of a wheelie as we, we come over the crest there and um, and we start heading down towards Greba Castle. So we see the speed there reaching a maximum of almost 185 miles an hour. Back a couple of gears and on the throttle as we drive down into Greba Castle. And once again, back down under the shade of those trees. So from bright sunshine into heavy shade. So very, very technical section and made all the harder by the shade of the trees in the sunny afternoon. Just taking a moment there to listen to that engine revving out and uh, reaching its maximum revs in each gear there, right up very close to 16,000 RPM. So the uh, small 600cc engine is absolutely singing. Now we head up the here into Gorse Lee, another very, very committed corner. So we drive up absolutely flat from the middle of the corner onwards in fifth gear there as we drive down to Ballacrane traffic lights. So from a, the last section where we just go, 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 now it's Lots of woe as we uh, drop right back to second gear in a slow corner. Middle of the corner back to about 65 mile an hour. And then back up into the trees again and back into that shade. And you see the areas here, the shade under the trees where it really carries, uh, it holds the, the dampness. So if there's been any rain in the morning or the night before, um, it takes a long time to dry around the edges of the hedges here and under these trees where it stays damp. And this is where years of uh, racing the TT comes into play because um, your knowledge, you know where the track tends to hold the water, where it dries first and and that's uh, so important when you go out here. There's no practice before a TT race that morning, it's straight out into the race so you know, years of knowledge and racing here prior to, to coming to the event really come into play. Coming down here through the Glen Helen section, and listen as I build the revs up here very, very fast into Glen Helen 1. And then braking and downshifting as we come into Glen Helen 2. Last little, little gas of power. We drop it back down into very tight second gear left hand up and up the hill towards Sarah's Cottage. Back to second in tight to the bank. Now we're winding the bike up here as we're heading up towards the Cronkavody Straight. So every bit of speed we can carry here is going to help us down the big straight coming up. So asking every bit of we can from that bike as we come out of that last kink and drive up onto Cronkavody Straight. 
A really fast section here. Helicopter up in the distance, I can see. Pit board on the left there. I've just got my signal. This is the last lap, and I think that pit board told me that uh, I was in position three. Absolutely flat and top gear as we, we peel off the end of Cronker Body Straight. Another very, very committed fast corner. So this is the last lap. There's less than a second separating uh, separating several of us on the road. It's a very, very close race. So past the back marker there, no time to hesitate. Another another tricky part of the TT course in the, late in the race when you're coming past slower traffic. There's absolutely no time to roll off to go past. You need to thread the needle and, and get past those slower riders as quickly as you can. Now we're coming to the uh, top of Bagara here. Roll off, flick it in left, and then drive past the bank. Literally brushing that bank with your left knee as you come past the grass verge there. Driving hard to the bottom of Bagara. Back a gear, big bottom out. And then back on the throttle as we drive on down away from the bottom of Bagara. Chance to catch your breath after that um, quite an exciting section of the track. It's almost short circuit style here under the trees, but the sort of billiard table smooth the circuit here. So knee buried into the tarmac, driving hard out of here like you would be on a short circuit. Beautiful section of track. Now we're tucked in and we're racing our way down to Kirk Michael. Wait over the front here as you drop down so the bike doesn't wheelie. Back into third gear. Very bumpy entrance to Kirk Michael Town. And you hear the, vibrate, the vibration of the bike here on the revs as we go over these bumps. And you can see the taco flicking there because the bike is bouncing off the bumps at such a high speed through Kirk Michael that um, it almost gives you double vision in the helmet. You're vibrating and bouncing around that much as you go over the bumps. Okay, just feathering the throttle as we almost get airborne over the jump on the way out exiting Kirk Michael Village and now we're into some uh, very fast corners here back up to top gear tucked in trying to hold that throttle at 100 percent you see every now and again the, the throttle trace shows that I'm just dropping off a little bit as I get the bike turned and then back to 100 percent throttle again so we come up to Alpine corner back to fifth flick it in wide open in fifth gear Really head down, tucked in as we're heading down to um, Balaf Bridge now. Big straight, very high speed. And see now throttle off, brake pressure up as we're um, braking from very, very high, sixth gear down to second. Over the jump. Back on the ground and through the gears again. It's interesting here at... Uh, at high speed, you see that my uh, the brake pressure, it's actually showing a, a slight bit of, um, of brake. Now that's actually, it's, I'm not braking there, but I think that's just the, the ultra high speed in the very fast sections is actually the wind pressure is pulling that front brake lever in slightly. Wouldn't be enough to be applying any brake to the bike, but just enough to set off the sensor on the switch. So it actually shows I'm sh braking a little bit where I'm actually not. So that's quite interesting. Just shows the high speed of the TT course. Through quarry bends. Fifth gear, working the bike left to right, and onto the longest straight of the circuit, Solby Straight. So this is a section where I get a chance to take a few deep breaths, um, look down at the um, at the dash, and look at, uh, at basically what what we're looking at here, minus the speed. I look at my revs, um, I get to look at my water temperature and some other information on the bike, and uh, make sure that everything's in check before we head into the next extremely technical section. We cross. Crosby, uh, we cross Solby Bridge, I should say, and the run from here down to Ramsey is where things get very exciting. Very bumpy, very technical, and lots of shade to deal with. So you see, once again, bright sunshine now back in under these trees. Damp patches, shade, some leaves on the edges of the road. Very technical, very tricky. Lots to look out for. Once again, if you, if you listen, you can hear the bike um, vibrating over these bumps as it bounces off the uh, the road ahead. This section here, definitely by far the most bumpy section of the TT course. Okay, winding our way down past the council yard. So very, very fast section of track. Lots of bumps. 
quite a quite a um, an exciting part of the course to ride through and quite a difficult one to master. But we're still asking everything that this little 600 engine can give us here as I'm holding it flat out past the curb that jumps out on you, winding our way down, counting the miles off to Ramsey. Another very bumpy section of turns. It's interesting through here, the speed you're hitting those bumps at, you, you're compressing the bike so much, the suspension's literally fully bottoming out over some of those bumps on the road, even though you're not, you're not going off a hump or a jump. The bumps in the road itself are so big, the suspension's going through all of its stroke. And we drive on down now to Ramsey Hairpin down into Parliament Square. All the way back to first gear. Knee on the ground, back out into the bright sunshine. You see the revs dart up then as the bike was uh, breaking traction and wheel spinning out of there and it probably will a little bit up this hill as well. So There's quite a bit of wheel spin through that section and that's, you know, a tyre that's now done four laps um, of the TT course. So the tyre's quite worn now and um, the bike's well up to full racing temperature and pace and those tyres are really starting to become uh, come, come quite slippery now. They've, they've, they've been through their best and... Um, they're starting to break traction as you're asking everything you can from the bike on the last lap. Back up into the shade now as we come out of the, uh, up to the waterworks section. Another section that holds dampness on the track, probably holds, holds water there longer than anywhere else on the circuit. Very close to the hedge on the exit of the waterworks. And back up to the bright sunshine as we come up to the gooseneck. Okay, into the gooseneck, back to first gear, back to 50 miles an hour. And this is where I say the mountain, mountain section of the course starts for me. So now I'm on the mountain, bright sunshine, clear road ahead. Come out of the gooseneck, first gear, and we're just winding our way up onto the mountain section here. And things are getting very, very fast. Completely different type of terrain that you're riding through it, it literally feels like you're on a different course because you've come from heavily populated houses trees, hedges and uh, lots of shade as you lead into Ramsey and now you're up onto the mountain totally open uh, apart from a bank on your left and a fence on your right there's very few reference points so a very tricky part of the course to know exactly where you're at because of those lack of reference points so that's another challenge in itself now winding our way here up onto the mountain mile. So we want to come through the little kink onto the mountain mile. Dodge the bank there on both sides, the right on the way in, the left on the way out. Now tucked in up to top gear and uh, another chance to take a big breath, have a look down at the dash of the bike, check that everything's okay, check the water temperature isn't too high, make sure everything's right before we get into the next technical section. Quite often you'll see the helicopter following you uh, as you head up the mountain. For me as a racer, usually if the helicopter's following you, it's because you're, uh, you're in a good position in the race, so that's usually a good sign. Okay, back to third gear here. Very tricky part of the track as you see the corners up ahead. Totally blind entry, so you need to know the course well because you're, you're turning into a corner that you can't see the middle or the exit of the corner, so you have to have 100% commitment as you come in. Up here, Black Hut, another corner, totally blind. You don't see the middle of the exit of the corner till you're there. And considering you go into that corner 150 miles an hour, you really need to know where you're going. Working our way onto the bungalow section here. Another series of four right-hand bends, each one completely blind. Working through there, throttle absolutely flat out in fifth gear. On a good run out of the bungalow. You hear there, asking everything and more of the motor as I run it into the rev limiter in uh, in fifth gear. There's a few spots on the course where it's it's uh, it's better to just let the bike over rev just a little bit than go up a gear, especially when you're about to um, and break to the next corner. Back down here, second gear across the tram lines, knee on the deck, just like a short circuit. You hear the bike braking traction as that back tyre squirms and slides away as um, I'm asking everything and more of that tyre as I come off the tram lines heading up the hill. OK, 
okay. Now we've come off the mountain and we're heading downhill. Now you see the difference in the way the bike picks up revs much, much quicker because you're going downhill, you've got gravity working with you. Everything happens a little bit faster once you start coming off the mountain than it does going up. So uh, quite, quite tricky actually as you come down to uh, thread the bike through these corners down into Windy Corner. Got an enormous amount of momentum going with you with downhill, carrying a lot of speed, well over 100 miles an hour as you tip through Windy Corner, knee on the ground. And get everything tucked in, elbows in, and uh, fire your way off down the mountain as we're heading down, winding off down towards Keppel Gate here. Back up to 180 plus miles an hour on the 600, so once again up to the bikes near maximum speed. So you can hear the bike then just uh, edging itself into that rev limiter before I shift into top gear. Back to second, past Keppel Gate. Back tyre, braking traction. Up to third, tight to the bank. And now we've got the view of the Craigner Bar Hotel as we head off down the hill. Massive crowd, bright sunshine. A couple of Australian flags are on the left as we uh, wind down towards the pub. Back down to second gear. On the throttle as early as I possibly can to get maximum drive heading off down towards Brandish. My pit board there on the left. And that pit board just uh, showed me P2 plus nothing minus nothing so right then I knew that uh, I had everything to race for absolutely nothing in this race one of the closest finishes in TT history and here I was trying to make up every single hundredth of a second in the last couple of miles that I could so absolutely flat out in the throttle tucked in as tight as I could behind that fairing just trying to save every thousandth of a second I can see John McGuinness here closing in ahead of me and uh, I didn't have to worry about John costing me any time. He was too far away for that. But this actually probably helped me, if anything, in the last section of the course as a, as a gauge, someone that I could uh, judge to, to reel in and try to work to, to make that time up on, uh, on uh, the rider that was close, close to me for position in the race. And coming down through the signpost bend, using every bit of the track, running it right out to the edge of the hedge. braking as late as possible as we head down into the nook. It's a fine line between uh, going to the corner too fast and, and not fast enough so you've just got to gauge that the best you can because like I said I'm trying to make up every thousandth of a second but also not make any silly mistakes. Yellow flag here so another section of caution. Riders drop some oil there so have to be a little bit cautious as we go past that tucked in there. You just hear my bike hesitate then. That was the bike actually starting for fuel as I come down across the finish line to finish the Supersport TT race.